Morning, yes, I'm here. Uh, can you see my screen? I can see it. 100%. Morning, everybody. Let's get straight into this morning's tech talk sponsored by Opsan PRB. This morning's topic, water meters. Um, it is something that has become a bit of an issue, um, not only in our area, but all over the country. Um, it has dawned on building control office and most local authorities that they are actually responsible for the water metering inside their own boundaries and with that is it is it has become a bit of a, a chaos and a free for all um sorry i just need to get my slideshow going here okay Regulation 509 um, from 2001, in terms of the Water Services Act. It was previously part of 10252 Part 1 as far as NXP is concerned, um, but it was removed because it was referring to an actual act. The act or the, the actual extract that we're looking at requires the local authority um, to or they refer to a water services institution, same thing, within two years after promulgation of these regulations, fit a suitable water volume measuring device. Let's, let's just cut that to water meter at this stage because that's what it is. Or volume controlling device to all connections provided within the area. And then it says that after 2001, a suitable water volume measuring device or water meter to every user connection made after the commencement of these regulations. So basically it tells the local authority that within two years after 2001, that is supposed to happen in their area of jurisdiction. Then the main thing then becomes, or the main issue then becomes, um, as far as consumers are concerned, if constructed or installed after promulgation, a suitable water meter must be fitted to separately measure and control water to every individual dwelling within a new sectional title development, group housing development, or an apartment building. To every individual building uh, having a maximum design flow rate exceeding 60 liters per minute within a commercial or institutional complex. So if you do have a little shopping center and that water or the maximum flow, which would easily pass 60 liters per minute, each of those little shops or each of those little individual buildings within that complex must be metered. Uh, we're not going to worry about the irrigation system because if you get caught using potable water and irrigation, you more than likely pick up hassles in any event. Then most importantly, where the water supplied is measured by way of a meter, that meter must comply with the Trade Metrology Act um, and it's a, if, it, if of a size regulated under the Act. We'll have a look at that shortly. But just a quick run through for the guys that have, that are, that have, why is my screen not moving? Here we go, sorry. For the guys that are, that are um, in these various, I just took one or two bylaws. You'll see that if you look at the city of Cape Town, water supplied to a premises must pass through a meter. Itaquini, same thing tells you there, all water supplied to a consumer shall pass through a meter. Joburg, same thing. Mangaum, welcome free state. Any measuring device through which water is supplied to the consumer and its associated apparatus shall be provided and installed by the municipality, shall remain its property and may be changed and maintained by the council when deemed necessary by it. You'll find in most cases that once a water meter is installed, that remains the property of that local authority. Same thing applies to us here in Nelson Mandela Bay. So when we start looking at water meters and we start looking at which ones you're supposed to use, you'll find that there is a national standard for um, water meters, SANS 1529. So if you look at the bottom left-hand corner there, this document is referenced in the Trade Metrology Act and the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. Basically what that means is that as far as the Trade Metrology Act is concerned, 
anything, whether you be at a filling station, uh, topping up fuel on your vehicle, whether you at a green grocer buying um, vegetables, anything that gets measured or that is sold by or in units or in different types of units need to be checked or they need to be verified as accurate. Now, this specific document 1529 consists of the following parts. You get the, the normal meteorological characteristics of mechanical water meters up to 100 millimeters, which is, um, well, it, it includes all from 15 upwards to 100. And then part three deals with the physical dimensions. In other words, the minimum size of the, the actual meters itself. Mechanical meters exceeding 100 but not exceeding 800 falls under part four. And then more recently, part nine is the requirements for electronic indicators used with mechanical meters, electronic water meters, and electronic prepaid water measuring systems. So as things have evolved, 1529, the actual standard has evolved with or has been growing with the, the, the industry, growing with the demand, making sure that it is or that it has kept up with the requirements. So when you're looking at water meters, and I believe a, um, our, our friends down in Cape Town, the city of Cape Town, have actually started picking up on the fact that they insist that your water meters used in that area be uh, bearing the SABS mark. Um, I am busy working on a two-part um, webinar around meters. There's so much information around these things, it's difficult to fit it into 20 minutes. I just want to highlight the, the, the potholes so that if you do start working or you do get asked to quote on a job, you don't get into trouble for ignoring basic stuff that is already in writing. Two types of meters, uh, multi-jet inferential, only use them horizontally. Uh, the piston type, the mechanical one, uh, volumetric, you can use them horizontally or vertically. Um, the, I'm going to move to the next slide. For the inferential, you'll see the water coming in from the from the strainer side. It actually spins the little wheel. The gears then in ratio then takes those little dials and turn them around until you have um, an actual reading. The one on the right, the mechanical one, is far more simple, far more uh, robust. You have water flowing in the one side, the disc spins around, and every time that little arm comes around and it clicks the wheel, it turns the meter. And then we all know that if you look at the um, uh, the last three red ones on the right-hand side on the, vol on the volumetric one, those are the milliliter ones. So those are the ones that if you do have water leaks, they move the easiest or they, they move the, the quickest. Quick touch on if you are going to be installing water meters in a complex, submeters uh, on a new install, um, all water supplied from main to an installation shall pass through an approved water meter that complies with the relevant national legislation, which is SANS 1529 and the Trade Metrology Act. Um, the issue is with, a, with a, a development like a sectional title is that the council would provide you with a bulk meter at the, at the entrance to the complex or on the bound or just within the boundary of that complex and the submetering is then left up to the contractor. The water meter shall be installed in a suitable location where it's easily accessible and maintainable. Remember those things, they do go faulty or they do get upgraded then the local authority or body corporate should be able to take them out without chopping half the building down. The installation condition shall be in accordance with the manufacturer specifications. In other words, can it be installed horizontally and vertically? Can it be done inside, outside? Meter installations from 15 to 40 mils shall, in, shall include an upstream isolating valve. In other words, before the meter. If not included in the water meter, an upstream strainer and a downstream non-return valve shall be fitted. Where water meters exposed to the elements in um, boundary or yard installations, the meter shall be installed in a protective meter box or a manifold assembly. And an additional isolating valve shall be fitted downstream of the water meter, either incorporated in the box or on the service connection of the consumer. So in other words, the shuttle valve before the meter actually belongs or should be used by the municipality to, to disconnect water, to work on the meter and get the thing back. Once you go above 40, we'll have a look at that now. 
sorry, what I've done is, uh, if you look at 6112A is what we've just dealt with. So the standard then moves on to B. Plastic water meter shall not be exposed to direct sunlight and shall be fitted in a meter box or enclosure. All too often you get to site and you see the guys have fitted um, plastic meters outside on the wall. They don't, firstly, they're not UV rated. Secondly, the heat affects the accuracy. It becomes a huge hassle and the manufacturer simply walks away from that whole installation. Then if you look at the far right hand side, um, that is not a plastic meter, it is called a wet dial meter. In other words, the water that runs through that line actually covers or fills that whole meter. Now from having, or I'm sure most of you have looked at uh, Jojo tanks or water storage tanks, you take water and heat and you end up with algae or you end up with this green film of growth somewhere in the system. In this case here, um, also, the instruction was not to be used in direct sunlight or not suited for UV fitting. So what happened was then the water starts heating up in that, in that water meter against the wall. You can see the brickwork in the background and within a couple of months you find that um, the meter is not even legible. Part C then says water meters from 50 upwards shall be fitted with a straight length of pipe on the same diameter as the meter directly up and downstream of the meter in accordance with the manufacturer specifications in order to prevent flow disturbances. If you put a elbow straight behind that the outlet side of that meter you'll find that it more than likely cause turbulence in that bend being 50 mil and bigger and then it interferes with the actual reading or the sensitivity of that meter. Then while we're dealing with a 50 mil and upwards, on mechanical water meter installations, it's recommended that a strainer be installed upstream to prevent damage, which brings us to the next slide. If you're looking at and take note of the, 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 the little the, uh, notation above the, the meter, 50 mil, or greater or equal 50 mil. So don't panic around the normal installation. Strainers have isolating valves fitted upstream and downstream of the strainer for servicing of the meter and the strainer. Isolating valves shall not be used as flow restrictors. We all know that from the hot water presentations or the, the hot water supply presentations. Pressure reducing valves shall only be fitted downstream of the meter after that prescribed length of pipe. So if you're using a master box or you're using a, a PRV right at the, at, the, at the installation point or at the meter connection point to, to make sure everything is balanced, you make sure that that uh, pressure reducing valve is right at the end or right after all of these. For uh, or even townhouse complexes, non-residential or multiple residential installations where water flow has a very high differential between low and high, a combination meter shall be used. Um, you'll find that when they do take that water meter reading, they take the big and small dial together because if you're only opening a tap or you've got a, a three mil orifice filling up a cistern, it's definitely not going to move 110 mil water meter. So all the smaller flow that goes through that whole system then becomes part and parcel of the second meter being read. Water meters shall not be installed in traffic areas. Um, from 15 to 100 mil nominal, they shall comply with 1529 part one. Electronic meters will be the part nine. The physical dimensions of the water shall com uh, apply with part three. And the requirements for water meters exceeding 100 mil but not exceeding uh, 800 mil are detailed in part four. Um, a friend of mine also informed me that when they do the testing, the actual trucks, or if you put a, a vehicle a meter in a trucking yard on some of these electronic meters, they do pick up those vibrations and they do interfere with those meters. So preferably out of out of a driveway, out of the out of arms way. What G says, provision shall be made for the drainage of water that might discharge from the pipe on which the water meter is to be installed. So if you look at the, the, the case on the right hand side, even if it, that was a non or a union type mixer a meter, sorry, and you were able to loosen up those two unions and remove the meter, you'll still end up getting flooded and getting um, foreign material into those pipes. 
The standard then continues to say that general installation serving premises of separate occupancy shall facilitate individual meetings. So when it comes to high-rise buildings, when it comes to uh, apartments or it comes to sectional title, um, the basic theory is that it promotes the economical use of water. Uh, this is best achieved via a single water connection. For high-rise buildings, meter reading can be facilitated using or the use of water meters with remote reading systems, anything. Um, you'll see the one on the right hand side, you can even monitor your water consumption with your smartphone. So whether they use radio, GSM, GPRS networks, wired counters, all of those things as long as they are approved and accepted. You'll see shortly the relation in, in, of the meter. If you go to your local authority and there's this huge overgrown thing, most of them have, I think R1 goes between 500 and a meter from the lateral boundary and between 500 and a meter so in that little square, you should be able to locate the water meter. Theory, sectional title complex. So what we have got is municipality took a reading at the bulk meter at the entrance, got to the 40 kiloliters. You end up taking the six consumers staying inside there and you end up taking their meter readings as they go around off that ring main and you end up with your, your, your uh, total. And lo and behold, is a water loss of three kiloliters. That could be unmetered from someone using uh, illegal supply. It could be an underground leak. That's your way in as a plumber. You approach the body corporate, you approach the managing agents, you say, have you got submeters? Sub or subsequent to 2001, we're all supposed to have these. So let's have a look at why you're actually losing water. You'll see some lovely inundations done here went through all the hassle of getting a, a brass meter for use outside and then you use non-compliant fittings and material. You see here's some nice mix-ups here. All plastic on the outside. Pardon the photo on the left hand side. I couldn't fit the whole installation in there but you can see that's now in theory that is now meter reading made easy. Um, so you've got the three units each metered, metered individually and they left that on the outside wall. Same thing on the right hand side, you've got a meter threaded into a non-compliant ball valve and you've got a crimp fitting on the other side which means that we're running out of options to remove that. And lastly, uh, when you do deal with pre prepaid water meters or you get asked to install prepaid meters, confirm with your local authority, make sure you use an approved type for use in the area You'll see the one on the right hand side has got copper tail pieces, the one with the polycop tail pieces or the, the uh, polypropylene on, on the left hand side won't be acceptable for use in our metro. And then confirm with the manufacturer where you can use them and what you can use them for. One thing to consider, your client and your supplier, the minimum standard for basic water supply from the Water Services Act. And this, this is Gazetted Act, says that the provision of appropriate education in respect of water use, uh, a minimum quantity of 25 liters per person per day or six kiloliters per month, minimum flow rate of 10 liters per minute and within 200 meters of an household with an effectiveness such that no consumers left for more than seven full days in any given year. So. If the prepaid meter you are going to install for your client or in a complex shuts off at the point where the money runs out and there are sick and elderly people or children in a, in a house that have got no water, someone's going to have to answer for that. Um, there is there are a couple of considerations. All of I'm saying is make sure that you do not leave people without water um, when you do install these prepaid meters. Okay. Are there any questions? So, uh, lastly, one of the important things we need to consider as well is that if you do your um, installations on water meters, make sure you do not interfere with the fire or the provision of fire water. If you do have a, a combined system, do not reduce that flow to that um, 
uh, to the hose reels to accommodate sub-metering inside a complex because if that thing fails it'll fail big time and there won't be water for putting out the fires are there any questions like a manier, we do in fact have one question for this morning. The question reads, must each individual townhouse have a meter including a bulk meter and this is applicable for flats as well? Uh, yes, the uh, after promulgation of that regulation in 2001, each of those individual units inside a, whether it be a sectional title or group housing or apartment buildings must be individually metered. The bulk meter belongs to the local authority. They bring or they take the reading of the water uh, used and they'll send you a bill. The submetering allows you to actually then start calculating whether you're losing water or not. But submetering after 2001, new apartments definitely is. Perfect. That's all of the questions we have got for this morning. Uh, would you like to end off, Manil? 100% guys, enjoy your day. Um, like I said, I'm working on a, a, a two-part presentation around water meters. There's so much information to disperse um, around this, uh, which meters, size, types, uh, pipe sizes, the whole setup. So watch the space. But in the meantime, I hope this was helpful. I'll chat to you guys again. Thank you. All right, we've actually just received a comment. Um, okay. It reads, the blue stand-up meters can't take the pressure. Do you have any comments on that, Munir? I'm not sure which blue stand-up ones he's talking about, but uh, yes, you will find that the um, when you look at 1529, um, one of the tests that they do on a, a meter is a pulse test which takes it from, I think if I remember correctly, please don't judge me, uh, 2,600 kPa. It then drops down to somewhere in the mid thousands and they pulse it back up to 2,600 kPa to make sure. So I would suggest start off by checking whether that is an approved meter, whether it's got an SA number or type approval number, and then approach the, the, the supplier and saying this is, or the merchant saying, look, these things are failing. If they don't last under pressure, then we're looking at wasting water and someone's going to pick up Essel. So someone needs to answer for that. All right. Well, then they, that is it that we've got this morning. So what I'll do is, guys, I'll go ahead end off the session now. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Manier, thank you for taking the time out to prepare for this morning. I hope that everyone enjoys the rest of the week and the weekend to come. Thanks, guys. Thank I'll you. see you guys next week.